standard of care for our uh, boys with Duchenne muscular dystrophy includes the institution of corticosteroid administration. So uh, typically when we start to see them uh, change in their function, usually this is around age uh, four to six, we start them on an oral corticosteroid regimen with either prednisone or the flazacort, and this has been demonstrated to prolong ambulation. With that, we tend to see a reduction in the need for scoliosis surgery, and it may have positive benefits uh, as well on the pulmonary function and perhaps cardiac function as well. So uh, institution of oral corticosteroids is considered standard of care for our patients with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Oral corticosteroids, as with any medication, have an accompanying potential for adverse effect. And so we have to monitor for that uh, adverse effect potential. Uh, one potential adverse effect is impacts to uh, bone health. And so we monitor bone health through a combination of ways, including uh, x-rays to look at bone density, most typically the DEXA. We also measure vitamin D levels on an annual basis, uh, trying to optimize those levels in addition to um, utilizing calcium and vitamin D supplementation to maintain bone health. Corticosteroids can increase appetite. And so uh, this is where we utilize the help of our dietitians as well to try to optimize the nutritional health of our patients, um, attempting to avoid uh, overweight, which can be very challenging, especially in boys who have limitations of their mobility. There are some other potential adverse effects of uh, corticosteroids that we have to keep in mind as well. And uh, this is routinely evaluated by the neuromuscular specialist at each visit. Among the treatment of muscular of Duchenne muscular dystrophy, um, etoclearsen belongs to a group of novel um, medications. Um, this is one that has been uh, fairly recently approved by the FDA. And they're really um, uh, gene modifier uh, treatments. Um, they're um, allowed um, skipping of the mutated uh, region of the gene so that the gene can be back in frame and able to actually produce some dystrophin. Um, so it's not gene transfer, but it's a gene modifying treatment. Um, belongs to the group of exon skipping uh, medications and basically has been proven to improve production of dystrophin. It's a drug that is given once a week through an IV infusion um, and is used. Uh, this particular etoplearsen is only applicable to about 13% of patients that have the correct uh, mutation that can actually be amenable to skipping of exome 51. So this is not a medication for all Duchenne patients, but only for a portion with certain mutations. The mechanism of action is that uh, this is a, a morpholino is an antisense oligonucleotide that attached to a certain region of the messenger RNA in the dystrophin gene and allow the transcription of uh, some dystrophin protein. So basically skipping uh, the, the missing portion of the gene and allow for transcription of uh, some dystrophin. So rather than producing zero dystrophin uh, with this medication, there is a partial production of dystrophin uh, protein. Yeah, this particular drug is given once a week through an IV infusion. Um, so usually in the, at the beginning when the medication is initiated in a patient, the first few infusions are given in an infusion center in the hospital as an outpatient. And then once it's established that the patient is tolerating the medication well, and generally this is a medication that in fact has a um, quite a safe um, side effects profile, then many patients receive the infusion weekly at home with just a nurse coming to the home. So with each diagnose, new diagnosis of Duchenne's, um, it, the first step is always to understand the genetics because um, that is really gonna pinpoint what uh, therapy um, may be um, uh, the best uh, 
uh, genetically based therapy for that patient. So with the Tepersen, um, this, this medication is going to skip exon 51, um, and essentially it's going to, to um, take that piece out so that you can take an out-of-frame mutation and transfer it into an in-frame uh, in mutation. So make it a milder disease is the idea. Um, the, um, but you must have the right genetics, so it must benefit um, that your um, of that child to remove that particular one. Um, if, if it's not, if your gene uh, change is such that it won't make a difference, then this is not the medication for, for that particular child. So sometimes there's a duplication um, in the, the DMD gene, um, and this would not be the appropriate therapy for, for duplication. And if your deletion was in the wrong area, then it's not going to be a benefit to you to skip exon 51. The efficacy um, that what they were able to show is that there was a 2.8 fold increase in the dystrophin. Um, typical uh, side effects um, can or adverse events seen in the studies could include like um, a headache or um, you know abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting. Those are the most common um, side effects in that category of medications. Bolidurcin um, is a exon 53 skipping uh, treatment. Um, so again, you have to have a, um, a mutation that is amendable um, to exon 53 skipping. So if you take that one out, does it truly change the reading frame into end frame? So knowing the genetics ahead of time is important with that. Um, and yes, um, so Golodurson did get FDA um, approved through an accelerated um, approval process. Um, and um, uh, I think that we'll continue to uh, see medications of this type um, get accelerated approval um, just because they've gone through um, rigorous trials and are beginning to show more benefit. Golodurson uh, has recently achieved uh, FDA approval, and this is a unique medication because it really is geared towards a specific DNA change. Uh, we were talking previously about the puzzle pieces that make up the dystrophin gene, and so many of our patients have um, missing puzzle pieces that uh, lead to a disruption of that reading frame when that protein is trying to be created in the transcription translational process. Uh, Golodurson is geared at helping to facilitate um, correction of that reading frame by allowing what's called exon skipping. In particular, allowing exon skipping for what we consider to be a 53 skippable uh, DNA change. And so this is allowing for um, exon skipping over 53, leading to an improvement in that reading frame to create uh, dystrophin protein. In the clinical trials, it was demonstrated uh, to lead to a clinically significant improvement in the dystrophin uh, production as was examined by uh, muscle biopsies. And so this allowed for the FDA approval of that medication. It is an intravenous medication. It is administered on a weekly basis to patients who are amenable to exon 53, exon 53 skipping.